let's evaluate the limit of uh, ln of the quantity x raised to 7 minus 1 minus ln of the quantity x cubed minus 1. So what is the form of this limit? So as x approaches 1, so we know this is approaching 0, but it is approaching 0 from the right because uh, x is approaching 1 from the right. And what is ln of a small positive number? The ln of a small positive number is a large negative number. So keep in mind the graph of our ln function looks something like this. So when you take the ln of a small positive number, you'll get a large negative number. And uh, similarly, this ln of x cubed minus 1 here will also approach negative infinity as x approaches uh, positive 1. So this is in the form negative infinity minus negative infinity, which is what? considered as the indeterminate form infinity minus uh, infinity. So to evaluate this limit, we may do the same technique as what we did in the previous uh, problem. So that is uh, combining these uh, two terms into a single term. And we can do that by using property of uh, ln. So we can write this down as limit as x approaches 1 from the right of uh, ln. So difference of ln is equal to ln of uh, quotient. Okay, So you have here x raised to 7 minus 1 over x cubed minus 1. Now, what is uh, the limit of uh, this uh, expression here inside the ln? As x approaches 1 from the right. So we know this numerator goes to 0 and the denominator also goes to 0. So this expression here has an indeterminate form 0 over 0. So we can apply El Hopital's rule for that one. So we can compute first for the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of this uh, expression inside the ln. And we'll get here by applying El Hopital's rule, we'll get limit as x approaches 1 from the right of the derivative of the numerator. So that is 7x raised to 6 over the derivative of the denominator. So that is 3x squared. And of course, before you apply El Hopital's rule again, so try to simplify this expression here. So we can cancel the two copies of x in the denominator and two copies of x in the numerator. And clearly, the limit is just equal to 7 over 3. Since this expression inside the ln is approaching the number 7 over 3 and this ln function is continuous at 7 over 3, then this limit is just equal to the ln of this limit here, which is equal to 7 over 3. So therefore, this is just equal to ln of 7 over 3. Next problem. Let's evaluate limit of uh, e to the x minus x squared as x approaches 0. Well, you might say that uh, the limit of uh, this expression is already infinity because uh, this uh, e raised to x here grows uh, faster than x squared as x approaches infinity. But how can we show that the limit is indeed equal to infinity? Note that as x goes to infinity, this uh, goes to infinity and this goes to infinity. So this has a form infinity minus uh, infinity, which is an indeterminate uh, form. So one way to evaluate this kind of limit is uh, by factoring. So here we may write, uh, for example, this limit as limit as x approaches infinity of, uh, we may factor out the e of x. And then this becomes e to the x times the quantity 1 minus x squared over e to the x. 
So we know that this goes to infinity already, but how about this expression here? 1 minus x squared over e raised to x. So if we compute for the limit of uh, this expression here, x squared minus e to the x, as x approaches infinity, so this has the form infinity over infinity, which is an indeterminate form. And we can apply here El Hopital's rule, and we'll get here limit as x approaches infinity of 2x over e to the x. And again, this is an indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. So again, we may apply El Hopital's rule, and we'll get here limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over e to the x. And clearly, the limit is equal to 0. So therefore, this fraction here approaches 0 as x approaches infinity. So we can already determine this limit here. And it is equal to what? So this goes to infinity and 1 minus x squared over e to the x goes to 1. Therefore, the limit is indeed equal to infinity. Next problem. Let's evaluate the limit of uh, this difference here as x approaches infinity. So as x approaches infinity, this radicand here goes to infinity. So this goes to infinity. And then this x here goes to infinity. So our limit has the form infinity minus infinity. So one of our strategies in evaluating this kind of limit is using rationalization. So that is removing radicals. So here we can remove the radical. Okay, It's like uh, treating this expression as square root of x squared plus 5x and then minus x. It's like over 1. And let's remove the radical in the numerator. And we can do that by multiplying the numerator and denominator by x squared plus 5x and then plus x over square root of uh, x squared plus 5x and then plus x. And this will give us limit as x approaches infinity of, so sum times difference. So this is a special product. It will give us square of the first term. So you have there x squared plus 5x minus square of x. So that is minus x squared all over the denominator square root of x squared plus 5x and then plus uh, x. Now we can cancel this one, x squared minus x squared, so that is equal to 0. And then uh, evaluating this kind of limit, we may apply our strategy in evaluating limits of rational functions at infinity. And our technique is to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator. But if you have a radical, you have to consider as well the radical in the denominator in this case. So it's like the highest power of x in the denominator. It is not x squared, but it is square root of x squared. So that is equal to x. So to evaluate the limit, we divide the numerator and denominator by x. So we'll have here 5x over x and then over square root of x squared plus 5x and then plus x and then over x and then over x. So that is the same thing as multiplying the numerator and denominator by 1 over x. And uh, this uh, fraction here can now be written as, uh, so we have here limit as x approaches infinity of uh, 5 over, so let's uh, put this x here inside the radical, and we'll get here square root of x squared over x squared, so that is 1, and then plus 5x over x squared, so that is 5 over x. 
So keep in mind that we can replace this x here by square root of x squared. So x squared over x squared, so this is equal to 1, and 5x over x squared is equal to 5 over x. And then plus x over x, so that is equal to 1. Now, as x goes to infinity, 5 over x goes to 0. So therefore, the limit is equal to 5 over square root of 1, so that is 1 plus 1, which is equal to 5 over 2. Now, let me share with you another strategy in evaluating this limit here. So instead of doing rationalization, we can also do factoring to evaluate that limit. So how do we apply factoring technique in evaluating such limit? So let's evaluate that limit using factoring. So here, we can also write this expression. So we have limit as x approaches infinity of, so the radicand in this case, we can write it as x squared times 1 plus 5 over x and then minus x. And then what is square root of x squared? So as x approaches infinity, we know that x is positive. So square root of x squared is just equal to x. So keep in mind that the square root of x squared is absolute value of x, but x goes to infinity, so that is just equal to x. So we can write that down as x approaches infinity of x square root of 1 plus 5 over x and then minus x. And now we can factor out the common factor, which is x, and we'll have here square root of 1 plus 5 over x and then minus 1. And what is the form of this limit? So this goes to infinity, and then this difference here goes to 0, because as x goes to infinity, this goes to 0. So square root of 1 minus 1, so that is just equal to 0. So this is in the form infinity times 0, or we just say 0 times infinity which is an indeterminate form. And we know that such limit form can be written in the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So uh, to write it in that form, we just have to write this expression as, uh, in this case, uh, we can keep this uh, factor here in the numerator and write the x as the reciprocal of 1 over x. So our denominator is 1 over x. And now the form of our limit is 0 over 0 as x approaches infinity. Since it is already in the form 0 over 0, so we can use L. Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. So we can apply L. Hopital's rule and we'll get here limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of this expression here, which is just 1 plus 5 over x raised to 1 half. So using power rule with the chain rule, so we'll get here 1 half times 1 plus 5 over x raised to negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside or the base. So that is negative 5 over x squared. So 5 over x is just 5x raised to negative 1. And then minus derivative of 1 is 0. And then over derivative of 1 over x, the denominator is just equal to negative 1 over x squared. And here we can cancel this x squared and x squared. And then this minus over minus, we can make that plus plus. And now we can already evaluate the limit. The limit is just equal to, so as you can see, 5 over x goes to 0. So the limit is just equal to 1 half. And then 1 raised to negative 1 half is just equal to 1. And then times 5, all over 1. 
which is equal to 5 over 2, which is the exact same thing as what we got a while ago.